Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to make this snail design. Um, this was kind of a random design I think I made once when I was like really stressed with school and just took a break and was like, oh I should make something but didn't know what to make. Um, so this is a little bit, <laughs> I don't even know. Um, but I do think it's a cute design. Um, I also think it's a fairly easy design, so if you're a beginner this is probably a good design. Maybe, yeah you could probably start with this design. Um, because there's not much attaching, the only things we attach is these, his eyes, and the shell to the body. But it's not hard to attach that at all, honestly, I've done it, like, it's super easy. Um, and band-wise, these aren't too bad either. So band-wise, the snail color, or the color you're going to want for your snail, is going to be, uh, 80 bands. And then for the, it's actually probably, I just realized I forgot to count these, so it's probably like 86 bands. Um, and then the shell's 100 and one band, so it's not too bad because it's 186 probably bands total. So it's not too bad, and honestly, after I made this small, like, this small shell, I'm probably eventually going to make, like, a mini snail, so that's coming. But today I'm just going to show you how to make this, this snail right here. And, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, this guy has a small snail, I fixed it on this guy, but, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say about this design. So, of course, you're going to want to get your bands that you want for your snail. So, for today's snail, I'm going to be using... Um, yellow, light yellow, like a pastel yellow for the snail. And then of course you're going to want some eyes. Um, and then for the shell, I'm going to be using three different colors today. Because I think it looks better multicolored. So I'm going to be using this, um, basically these sweet bands. And also, I apologize if you hear anything in the background. It is Sunday, I swear I always film on Sundays. And my family is watching football, and I'm pretty sure it's the Cowboys game, so that means they're probably going to be a little loud. So if you hear yelling, it's not anything, it's just football. <laughs> also, last thing you're going to need, of course, is a hook and a C-clip to mark your rows. Um, I'm using my double-ended hook, but like I've always said, I just, I really like the double-ended hook. But I think that's all I wanted to say, so we are going to get started. I'm just going to pick up some bands. So we're going to start with our snail. So you're going to want whatever color you want for the snail. I'm going to be using that yellow like I said before. So I'm just picking up some bands really quickly. And the snail is actually really easy to make. So to start, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap a band three times around our hook. So that's one, two, and three. Then we are going to pull a band through everything on our hook, so the whole cap band. We're going to put both ends back on our hook. And then we're going to push the back one over the front one. We are going to be putting um, six, six stitches in our cap band, so if you already know how to do that, you can just keep going. But I'm going to explain what I'm doing for anyone who doesn't know. So that was one stitch, so we're going to do five more, kind of just like that, but... It, it's a little different, so first thing, so <laughs> uh, lost my train of thought. So once again, we're gonna pull a band through just the cat band, so just these first three loops, not this last one. And then we're gonna put both ends back on and put the back one over the front one, and then we'll put this loop over from last time as well. And now we're gonna do the exact same thing we just did four more times, so we have six loops in total on the cat band. So we'll go back through the cat band pull a band through just the cat band, put the back one over the front one, and then put the loop from last time over. And I just have to do that three more times. Also, if you want a more slower um, explanation, I actually did a Lumagarby Basics video recently, so you can check that out if you're confused. But I'm just doing... Three, how many stitches are we at? Okay, I need one more. And I'll show you how to count the stitches in a second, in case you don't know. So, like that. So, now we have sh we should have six stitches, so if you count, you should have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And make sure not to count this band that kind of looks like a loop, but it's not. So once you've made sure you have six bands um, in your cap band, instead of going back into the cap band, what you're going to do is you're going to go into the first loop. And again, it's not this um, band that's going like horizontally. It's this. So we're just going to go through that. And just like we do with the cat band, we're going to make a stitch. So we'll just pull it through this loop. Put the back one over the front one. And then put that other loop over from last time. And on this band, we're going to put the C-clip. So 
Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was looking at my instructions and not putting my sequel thing correctly. Okay. So now it gets kind of repetitive. Because we don't increase right away, we are just going to do 11 rows normal going around this um, thing of six we just made. So all we're going to be doing is putting one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip for 11 rows. So I'm just going to show you what I mean by that. So we'll go into the next loop, pull the band through just the loop, put the back one over the front one. And then put that other loop over as well. And we're just going to do this all the way around until we get back to the C-clip. So we're just making single stitches or normal stitches until we get back to the C-clip. So we're just putting one stitch in every loop. And I bumped my camera. And like I said, we do this for 11 rows. So if you want to go off camera and do the rows and then come back, that's fine. But I'm going to stay on for two rows or three rows in case anybody's confused. And once you get to the C-clip, all you'll do is make a stitch on the band that has the C-clip on it. And then you'll get the C-clip. And you'll take it off that band and move it up to the new one. Like that. And after this row, because we didn't increase or decrease or anything, you should still have six bands. So if you count, you start by counting the one on your hook. So you go one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we were just going to do that exact same thing. We just did ten more times. But because... Wait, what was I saying? I don't even know. But yeah, so we're just going to keep doing that. I'm going to stay on to do probably two more rows, and then I'm going to go off camera to do the rest of them. But this is fairly simple. So all we're doing is putting one stitch in every loop until you get back to the C-clip for uh, ten more rows. This is, row, this is the second row for me. I'm already almost done with this row. This goes kind of fast because it's such a... Like, it's not big to go around, it's small. So we just keep doing this. And we'll move the C-clip up. And like I said, because we don't increase, we, once again, we'll just check to make sure we have six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And that was row two for me, so I have nine more rows to go. And I'm going to do this last row on camera, and then I'm going to go off to do the rest, and then I'll come back. But I'm going to do one more row. So, once we're just putting one stitch in every loop. Until we get back to the C-clip. I don't know what my brother's doing. I hear him in his room. Okay, so now I'm back at the C-clip, so all we'll do, once again, is we'll just move it up. And once again, after that row, you should still have six bands, so if you can, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to go off camera to do the rest of the rows. Um, I just did three on camera, so if you followed along with me, you should have... <laughs> oh god, math. Um, you should have eight rows left, so you're just going to want to do eight more rows, and then you're going to come back, and I'll show you how to close up this nail. Okay, so after you do 11 rows, it should look something like this. I honestly don't know if I did exactly 11. I was counting, but they look like they're the same size. But honestly, if your snail's like a row shorter or a row longer, it's not going to be that big of a deal. I always accidentally lose count, so this happens like all the time. But anyway, so we're going to start. So this nail actually comes together pretty quickly. So now we're going to be doing this row as we are going to be decreasing every other stitch until we get back to the C-clip, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So, so after this um, first stitch with a C-clip on it, the next one's going to be a decrease. I feel like it's so blurry. There we go. So the next one's going to be a decrease, and the way you decrease is you grab the front part of the first loop and the back part of the next loop, and you're just going to make a stitch on this. And the next stitch we'll do one just normally. And then in the stitch after we are going to do a decrease. And then once you get to the band, oops, I can't see. Making sure I'm not missing a stitch. Okay, and then after that you should be at the band with a C-clip on it. And all we're going to do is we're going to make a stitch 
on this. And we would usually move the C-clip up, but we're actually almost done, so you can just take it out. Also, I forgot to mention, we don't stuff this design. I didn't forget to stuff it. We don't stuff this one. Um, so all we're going to do now, after that row, um, you should have four loops left. So one, two, three, four. But um, if that last row was a little bit hard to see and you couldn't see me decreasing, like I said, the Lumagurmi Basics video I show a little better. So, yeah. But after we decrease every other stitch, you should have four loops. And if you do, all we're going to do is we're going to decrease till it's closed now. So every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease. And I think we're only going to be able to do like two of them. So that was one decrease. And yeah, this next one's the last one. And then once you pick up that last decrease, all you're going to do is you're going to get a band. You're going to pull it through everything on your hook. Then you put the back one over the front one, and then you pull it tight. And then all we're going to do is we are going to tuck in the tail. But normally you pull the tail in pretty hard, but because I kind of like how it looks a little bit pointy, you're going to not want to pull it in super hard. So you're going to go up. And you pull it in, but you don't pull it in like super hard. And it'll stay pointy. Um, I actually think I accidentally did an extra row now that I'm looking. Oh no, I did it correctly. I don't know why it just, I felt like I did an extra row, but I actually did it correctly. No, I think I did do an extra row. I definitely did an extra row. Oh well, it's no big deal. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we're going to make the shell. So we're just going to set this piece aside and we're going to make the shell. So the shell is fairly simple as well. Um, I'm going to get my color I want for the shell. So for me, that's just the sweep spans. And I'm going to just pick some up real quick. So the shell starts exactly like how we started the snail. So we do a tripled cap band and then we put sticks, stitches in the cap band. So you can get started on that if you want to already. But I'll show you in a second. I'm just picking up bands. It always takes me a second because I like to put them in order on my finger. I'm trying to hurry up and finish filming because I really need to not film on Sundays because my family like enjoys watching football and like screaming and all that at the TV, which I don't understand, but I mean, they have fun doing it. And I hear my mom like tell my dad like, she's, she's filming and I'm like, I don't care if they're yelling while filming. Like my camera doesn't pick it up too much. It's just sometimes you can hear some background noise and I don't want you guys to think like they're fighting or something, but they're just watching football and that's why I say it, but like, I just feel bad. Anyways, so we're going to start. So once again, we're going to start with a triple cap band. So this is one, two, and three. And then we're going to pull a band through the cap band. Put both ends back on. And we're starting this exactly the same as last time. Now you push the back one over the front one. And then we go back into the cap band. Pull a band through just the cap band. Put the back one over the front one and then put that other loop over. And we do that exact same thing we just did four more times. So we have six loops in total on the cap band. So this is three. And then four. Oops, this one's twisted. I'm sorry, I'm going to get picky because I hate when you can tell they're twisted. So that's four. Five and six. So once you have six loops in the cab band, if you're not sure, the way you can make sure is you're going to count your loops. So you start by counting the one on your hooks. So you go one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then once again, instead of going back into the cab band, we're going to go into the first loop. And we are just going to make a stitch and then put a C clip on this loop. I went kind of fast there because I already showed you how to do the start bit, so nothing different. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to be increasing everything. So we are going to be doing two stitches in each loop until we get back to the C-clip. So this one already has one in it, but because we're increasing, we have to go back in and do another one. So back in and make another stitch. And that's an increase. So all an increase is, because we haven't done one in this tutorial yet, is you put two stitches in one loop so I did that one kind of fast I'll go a little slower on the next one so we go in and you make a stitch 
then you just go back in and you make another stitch. And we just keep doing this until we get back to a C clip. So you do one, and then you go back and do another one. Oops. Oh no. Shoot, I pulled my hook out. Okay, I need to pick up more bands really quickly. Okay. So, do an increase. Oh, we're increasing all the way around, so everything's an increase. Okay, and then once you get to the C-clip, you'll just make a stitch. Oh god, it got tangled in the C-clip. Okay, you're just gonna make a stitch and move it up. My C-clip kind of got tangled in the stitch I was making, so I'm kind of just taking it out, and then I'm gonna finish off the stitch, and then I'll just put it on this band. It just kind of got tangled somehow. I've never had that happen. So after that last row, we should have 12 loops, so if we can, we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10, 11, 12. So once you make sure you have 12 loops, um, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be increasing every other loop. So I'm just going to pick up bands really quickly. Um, Trying to make sure I'm doing them in the correct order. Okay. It always takes me a second to pick up bands. I'm sorry. I always feel like it's boring when I pick up bands. Almost there. Okay. So now we'll be increasing every other stitch. So this one wasn't an increase, so the next one would be an increase. So we just put two stitches in this one. And then the next one we would do one single or normal. So we just put one stitch in that loop. That's how I like to think about it. And then once again, the next one we do an increase, so we're putting two. And we just keep doing this all the way around. So we're increasing every other loop. But another way to think about it is basically you do an increase and then you do a single or a normal stitch and then you just keep doing that. So I just did an increase, so we just do one normal. And then we do another increase. I always try to keep my fingers out of the way in tutorials. Oops, oh my god, I gotta stop pulling my hook out. And then we do one normal, and then we'll do an increase. And then one normal again. I wasn't sure if I did an increase last, I had to go back and look. And we need to pick up more bands. Um, no, <laughs> wrong color. Okay. What do we do last? Almost there. We do an increase. And then once we get to the C clip, just like before, we'll make a stitch on the band that has the C clip on it. And we will move it up. Like that. So after that last row, you should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You should have 18 loops. Okay, I just went off camera to pick up bands also because I was like... My thing only films in like 20 minute segments, so I had to cut it off. Um, but anyways... Oh, it went blurry. 
a little bit. Um, so like I said, after that last row, you should have 18 um, loops. And now it gets a little repetitive again because we are going to be doing two rows normal. So we're just putting one stitch in every loop until we get back to stick up. And we do this for two rows. And after each of the two rows, you should still have 18 loops left. So I'm going to stay on camera to do both the rows just because, I don't know. Just in case anybody's confused. Um, and usually when it's just two rows, I'll stay on camera and do them because it's not that bad. But whenever it's like over, I'd say like three rows, I'm like, I'm going off camera. But yeah. So we're just putting one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip. Um, I feel like I don't need to explain this too much because you already made the snail body and that's literally what we do a lot of for the snail. So I'm just going to stay on camera so you can see what I'm doing, but I'm not going to explain what I'm doing because we already kind of sort of did this. But yeah, we're just putting one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip. I really do feel bad though. I really need to not film on Sundays because my parents... And their football. I just feel bad because I, I don't want them to feel like they have to be quiet because I'm filming. Um, I don't ask them to. It's just I let them know I'm filming so they don't say anything really weird, super loud, which they do sometimes. So that's why I tell them. I don't tell them like to make them quiet, but my mom's always like yelling at them to be quiet. Another thing is like whenever I'm painting or drawing or anything... My mom keeps everybody out of my room, which I told, I asked kind of sort of for when I was still in school because it's kind of hard to work and draw on projects when everyone's walking in every five seconds. So I, I started closing my door, but then now I'm out of school and I don't mind if people walk in, but my mom will still yell at everybody like, no, leave her alone. And I'm like, Ugh, because I don't know. It's just weird. Uh, yeah. I'm picking up bands, but I thought I put them in the wrong order. Okay. I really like the colors of the shell. You know, weird thing I have realized though, like just from seeing my family watch football is I understand the rules of football now. Um, for the longest time I didn't, but now I can actually sit out on the couch and like understand what's happening. Because sometimes when I'm bored and I'm like looming or something, I'll move to the living room just to, just because I'm tired of being like alone or whatever and <laughs> looming. And they are often watching footballs on Sundays and I'm like, what the heck? I understand what's going on, which is weird because I used to think it's so confusing. Um, anyways, after that last row, you should have 18 loops still, so I'm going to count. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And we're going to do that exact same thing we just did again. So, we just put one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip. Yeah, but, um, like I was saying, it's just weird, because I understand the rules of football. I mean, I don't understand, like, the penalties and all that, but I understand the basic concept. So there's that. Another thing recently I found out was, like, that my aunt watches my videos and, like, all of them. I thought she didn't watch my tutorials because I thought this would be extremely boring if you're not, like, following along. But she watches them all, and I don't mind. It's just, yeah. I don't like having family members watch my videos mainly because I'm afraid of what they're going to say, kind of. Even though she says she likes watching all my videos and she always comments, I just, I feel, I feel weird. With some of my other family, I don't mind some of my closer family, it's just like... Plus, like, my mom's side of my family all knows I, like, know I loom, my dad's side doesn't, and I'd, li I'd like to keep it that way, because my dad's side's a little weirder. Yep. I don't know, I always talk about things when I'm doing these, like, long rows, because I don't want to be, like, just sitting in silence. But we are almost there. It really only takes a second, and that's why I stay on camera. But yeah. My aunt was also telling me how she thinks it's smooth, how I, like, transition from, like, instructions to random talking bits and then back to instruction. And I don't know, I do feel like I've gotten better at um, making tutorials, but I think that's just because I've done so many at this point. My first tutorials are so bad, never watch them. 
I used to film so many tutorials when I was sick too because it's like my only time to film. But we just finished doing two rows, so. Um, you can count if you need, but I'm not going to count because I know I have 18 stitches. So, after the two rows, your shell should look something like this. And now we are going to start closing this up. So, I need to pick up bands again because I just finished using all my bands. But, yeah. So, for the next row, um, we're going to be decreasing every third loop. Um... I should have tried to pick up bands and explain instructions at the same time because I keep forgetting what color is next. Yeah, okay. Okay. So like I said, we'll be decreasing every third. So we were going to be doing two singles and then on the third one we do a decrease. So this is one. Next one's two. And then this would be the third loop, so we do a decrease, so we grab the front part of the first loop and the back part of the next loop, and we make a stitch. And we just keep doing this all the way around, so we do two singles, so one, two. And then on the third one, once again, we decrease, so we grab the front part of the first loop, the back part of the next loop, and we make a stitch. And we just keep doing this until we get back to the C-clip. So... One, two, and then we do a decrease. And then one, two, and another decrease. Uh, and I need more bands. So we just did decrease, so it's one, and then two. And the last decrease would land on the C-clip, but I don't think we do it. Uh, let me check. Okay, so I was correct. So our, so you do two stitches, and the last one will land on the one with the C-clip, but we do not decrease. We just make a stitch and move the C-clip up. So after that last row, you should have 14 loops. If you can, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So now we're going to be doing this row. We'll be decreasing every other loop. Um, so it's the same thing as last time, except for we do one decrease and then a single or a normal stitch, and then we do a decrease. And we just keep doing that. I'm trying to see the order I need to pick my bands up in. Yeah, I was trying to do a different color I haven't done of, like... Lumagurmi, because I was originally going to use the Blue Paradise mix to do the shell and have him still be yellow. I wanted my snail to be yellow, I knew that, but then I was like, oh, I always use, like, I use Blue Paradise mix for my turtle shell, and I was like, I don't want to do the same thing. And then I thought about using Tutti Fruity mix, but then I'm like, but then my snail's yellow, so it'll kind of blend in. So I ended up just using other sweet spans for the shell. But yeah. Now that I've finished picking up my bands, we decrease every other. So this one was a normal stitch, so the next one's a decrease. So we got the front part of the first loop, back part of the next loop. And we make a stitch. And we do one normal again, so we just... And then we do a decrease. So front part of the first loop, back part of the next loop. And we just keep doing this. So we do one single or normal stitch. And we do a decrease. We just keep doing it. Also, after this row, we should probably stuff it. At least I remember. <laughs> Most of the time, I don't. <laughs> I think it was when I was making the shell um, yesterday. I forgot to stuff it, and it was, like, really, really closed. And I was like, oh, no. Um, one... And on this, uh, once again, the decrease will land on the C-clip, but this time, because we're almost done closing it, we're going to do the decrease, so. Like that. And then the C-clip will go on this band, so we just take it off. 
and put it on this band. After that last row, we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, nine. Wait, why does it say I have eight in my pattern? One, two, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Why do I have nine? I think I wrote something wrong in my pattern. Um, but honestly, after this row, if you have nine or eight, it's not a big deal. Because we're almost done closing it up. So, yeah. I wrote down nine. But I did eight. Um, let me make sure I did this correctly. Okay, I did it correctly. Um, I, maybe I miscounted last time, but I have nine loops. So if you have nine, if you have eight, it's fine. Because after this last row, you're not going to be able to tell. But now we are going to want to stuff our creation, so I'm just tearing up some cotton ball off camera. And then we are just going to stick it in. And you can take your hook out if you don't pull in it too much. Um, the loop won't go over the C-clip, so the C-clip should hold it pretty well. We are just going to stuff it. Look at that. I think that's a good amount of stuffing, actually. And now we are just going to be decreasing everything until it's closed, so this row is pretty simple. I'm just going to pick up a few more bands so I have enough. And like I said, we'll just be decreasing everything until it's closed. So we can take out the C-clip at this point. Now we just decrease. So every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease. So you grab the front part of the first loop, back part of the next loop. And we decrease until this is closed up. All I'm doing is decreasing. I'm kind of silent because I don't know what to say. Almost there. I have two left, probably. Uh, okay, so this is the last one. So usually on the last decrease I can possibly do, what I'll do is I'll pick it up so it's on my hook. And then instead of just pulling it through just like the decrease, I pull it through everything on my hook. Put the back one over the front one. And pull it tight and then we just hide the tail inside um, where do I want to get the tail from I'm sorry I'm having a kind of hard time seeing on camera where the heck there we go it's kind of because I went up into it weird uh no that's not good There we go. Kind of didn't pull it in as nicely as I would have liked. Like it's this little thing. Now, sometimes if this happens, it's how you pulled it in. I'm gonna go off real quick just to tuck it in correctly. It's kind of hard to tuck in tails on camera, so I'm just gonna go fix this. And it's just how I tucked it in. Nothing's wrong with the pattern. Okay, so we just finished um, making our shell. And now all we have to do is connect the snail body to the shell and this is pretty easy I usually only have to do like three stitches and I don't put the face on yet because I find it easier to attach the snail to the shell first so last time I just used the snail color to attach the shell but you could probably use the shell color um, but I'm gonna use the snail color again today just because that's what I did last time so all we're gonna do is you're gonna want to I mean, this is round, so you're really just going to want to pick a spot. I usually try to tie, like, right in the middle. So you're going to go through part of your snail, and you're going to go through part of your shell, and you want to make sure... Well, this is actually the first one, so you don't have to worry about too bad about how it's lined up. Just going to want to go through part of your snail, and then part of your shell. I'm going to go through right here. And then you'll pull a band through everything. Tie it tight. And I usually don't hide the tails yet. I like to make sure I have everything correct, like attached correctly and then hide the tails. Um, so I'm going to put the head on next. 
And this is where you want to make sure that it's kind of straight to where you attached it the first time. So I'll hold it in place. And I'll usually look at where... Uh, attach it, like what bands are closest to each other, just when you set it up. You can kind of see what bands are next to each other. And then I go through part of each of those. Pull a band through everything. And pull it tight. Like that. And then all the last thing we're going to do is just attach the butt a little more to the tail. And it's the same thing. You're just going to want to... Usually what I do is I'll set it. And then I'll look to see where the bands are touching. Like where it would naturally line up. And then I'll go through those and tie them together. Just so that way it doesn't end up crooked. I find that's the easy way to do it. Just to kind of see what bands you see already kind of lining up. And then just tie them. Like that. So now we have to tuck all these tails. Because our snail looks great. Um, I've been doing that recently where I don't hide the tails in until I'm happy with it because that way if you have to untie it it's easier to find the tail whereas if you tuck it in then you gotta try to pull it out. But if you want to attach like um, it his shell to him more you can. I usually only do three like knots because it holds pretty well. There we go. Snails. Now all we, all we have to do are the antennas and the eyes. So I'm going to do the antennas first and then we'll put the eyes on. Um, so we're going to want more of our snail color. And the antennas are really simple. Okay. So all we're going to do is we're going to wrap a band four times around our hook. So usually what I'll do is I'll double a band. And then I'll grab both those loops. Wrap them around again, and then we get an, another band, we double it, and we pull that onto the doubled band, then we double another band, and then pull this onto that band, and then we pull a band through, oops, and this one's not doubled, it's just a band through everything on our hook and then this is our first antenna and I'll usually attach the antennas right onto where the cat band is you can tell this is like our magic ring and I'll usually just go right here and detach an antenna and then hide the tail in I'm gonna pull it straight down the middle so that way it kinda sticks up nice yes and we're going to do the exact same thing we just did again, I'll show you. But we have one antenna. So once again, you just get a band, double it, grab both loops, wrap them around again. And we're going to double a band. Pull the cat band onto this doubled band. Double another band. Pull this onto that. And then pull a band through everything on our hook. And then we tie the antenna in. And like I said, I usually tie the antennas like directly onto the cat band. I just think it's a good spot for them. And then we hide the tail. There we go. Like that. And now all we do is we put the eyes on. Um, if you don't have beads for eyes or safety eyes or whatever you're using, another thing you can do is you can wrap a band four times around your hook, like we did for the start of the antenna, and then just pull the band through, like a band through, and it'll work as an eye. But I'm going to just put my eyes on. And there's no exact spot I do the eyes. Just pick a spot you feel like would look nice and then tie them in. Hide the tail. I'm sorry if I always go off camera when I'm hiding tails. It's just hiding tails on camera. It's kind of a pain. But yes, we are just going to tie the eyes in. 
Oh my god, this one's adorable. I love this snail. Okay, I'm tempted to give this one a bow. How would a bow look on a snail? Hold up, I'm gonna make a bow real quick. Um, what color should a bow be? No, I think it's just gonna be a purple and pink bow. So, I'm just making a bow off camera. I can't really do it on camera because I feel like that won't end well. Ah, okay, wait. Okay, I made her a bow, but I think it's gonna cover all her antennas. Let me try. Give you guys the bow reveal. <laughs> okay, it's kind of cute. Don't know if I like the bow or not, but she's done. So, I hope your snail turned out okay. Um, this is a very easy design. Okay, I kind of love her bow now, <laughs> but I might make it a little smaller. I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. Um, but I hope your snail turned out okay. I hope you found this tutorial easy. Uh, I do think I accidentally maybe. I think I might need to tie this this one's head in one more time. I think I tied it a little low. But other than that, I think this... <laughs> yeah. Um, subscribe if you want to see more tutorials from me. I actually have some new things coming, and I'm going to show you a pin... Like, a, a sneak peek of something I'm working on. So, this is a mushroom, but let's just say it's a little bit smaller of a mushroom. Um, we also have a pig design I haven't really finished, so it's just a pig shape. But yeah, I'm always working on new things, so subscribe if you want to see more tutorials from me. Um, I hope you like this video. I hope your snails come out okay. If you make a snail, definitely share them with me on Instagram. I want to see how your snail looks. And yeah, I think that's it for this video, so I'm gonna go. Bye.